Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry that we didn't have our normal upload schedule. Got a little off track, real life kind of gets in the way. So I saw this question a few times, why we didn't go 6.4 over 6.7, and what is a deck plate? So full disclosure, this video is gonna be mostly informational talking, not much wrenching, actually no wrenching at all in this video. But these are topics that I see a lot on forums, I see a lot on Facebook, and a lot of people have different opinions, and I'm gonna go ahead and give you mine, and also give you guys some facts on this deck plate. So, obviously, we have our DNJ Precision Machine deck plate enforcer engine. This is still a 6.7 liter displacement, four to 10 bore. So that's four inches, 0 0.210 is how that would be written out on paper. And then you have your five nine bore size, which is 4.015. Now, when you take into account a common stroke, you have a 4.800, which is a 5.9, and then you have a 4.880, which is a traditional 6.7. So with a 4.800 stroke and a 4.015 bore, you end up with a displacement of 5.9 liters which I want to say is like 349 cubic inches. I could be off on that. But anyway, and then on a 6.7, you have a 4.210 bore size with a 4.880 inch stroke. That ends up with like, I think it's 404 cubic inches. I should have probably researched this beforehand, but either way, there is a displacement change there. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, Okay, we're gonna use billet rods because that's all I have. I apologize, I'm not like balling out for you guys. But we have a Waggler standard rod here, and this is the one inch longer rod here. Now, I always see this all the time. People are like, how are five, nine, six, seven use the same rods, yada, yada. The rod length does not change from a five, nine to a six, seven. And the reason why they did not change is because the crankshaft obviously added the stroke and then what most people don't know is a 6.7, the pin height is different in the piston. Let me, see, these are the benefits of just taking way too much crap apart for way too many years. All right, we're going to our boneyard of BS. Ah, 5.9 late. Okay, so this is a 5.9, 04 and a half to 07 wide bowl piston. Now, if you guys look, kind of hard to see here, but there is an 80 thousandths difference in pin height. Now, why this becomes a factor, if you guys are familiar with Power Driven Diesel, we offer a 6.1 stroker kit that allows you to run a 6.7 crankshaft in your 5.9 block. And if you guys ever notice, we machine 80 thousandths off your 5.9 piston. The reason why is if you're running a 6.7 crank, you gain 80 thousandths of, we'll call it protrusion, but really it's stroke, and you're running the same rod, and because the pin height on your 5.9 piston is 80 thousandths taller, what happens is this piston has its normal protrusion of let's say 20 thousandths plus 80 more on top of it, which is why we have to fly cut it. Now, because we stroke the engine, you are gaining the benefits of a higher compression ratio. So don't worry about that. And with a 12 valve and a VP, because of bowl design, the 80 thousandths isn't a huge deal. From what I've gathered on common rails, because of how little material is up here on the top ringland, you run the risk of really burning into that ringland. Whereas the 12 valve and VPs have a much thicker, it's almost a hundred thousandths thicker back to this boneyard i don't know if i have any vp pistons i don't to be fair like everybody says all oh, 12 valves are the best yeah i don't have any vps um everybody says 12 valves are the best but really in my opinion as far as pistons to use like the vp44 factory pistons have held a ton of power in my experience and i think a lot of it has to do with the meat that they have up top. They usually have about 350 thousandths from the ringland right here down. So 
back to what we were talking about. That covers your 6-1 stroker. Now, the deck plate. Why is it so cool? Well, there's a variety of reasons why the deck plate's so cool. Number one, I mean, look at it. It, it just looks sick. Um, so, as you guys can see here, what they do, and this is how DNJ does it. I'm assuming other companies are similar. They use a one inch steel, I believe this is billet, and they add it to the OEM block. Now what that allows for is when the piston comes up and the compression ignition happens, it's happening in the deck plate, which is inherently stronger than the OEM block. Now, a lot of you guys will remember we ran a Hamilton comp wet block. One of the things that Hamilton did was made the fire deck of the block, which, man, you guys just get all the props tonight, which is this top portion here. Now, as you guys can see, a factory block, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little step in here, right? Um, right there where my fingertips at. That's the fire deck. Now, the typical OEM fire deck's about a half inch. What the guys over at Hamilton Cams did is they casted OEM style blocks with, I believe it's an inch and a half of extra fire deck. So in their mind, instead of using a deck plate, they went ahead and thickened up the OEM casting, and then they also upgraded the material. So a normal block is 250 MPA. They went ahead and upped it to 300 MPA. Now, all BS aside, my opinions aside, in theory, it should have worked excellent. Now, the steel piston failure, whatever. The cast piston failure, when we put a hole in the block at KOS, that was 100% our fault. The cast pistons, we knew weren't going to hold up to that forever. We were just very unlucky when it did fail. So the second block, again, I'll own that one 100%. Um, anyway, that was what they tried to do. Now, what the deck plate gives you that the comp wet block didn't, is number one, you have sleeves. Now, to be fair, you could definitely sleeve. I mean, you guys can see here, we sleeved this block, kind of hard to tell, but there are sleeves in there. These came from Powerboard. This Powerboard is actually the same company that makes the sleeves for Drew. That's why I went with them, but it gives you a sleeved block. Now, a lot of you guys are like, what's that? Well, it's just like big rigs, essentially. You have a sleeve that gets pounded into the block. Now, what's awesome about that is, I'm not envisioning any problems, but let's say we have a problem or we need to do a refresh. Well, I can just buy six sleeves from Drew, six pistons from him, and pop these suckers in and out here in Utah without ever having to send it back to Ohio. So it's very quick to do a quick in-frame, so to speak, without having to go to the machine shop, pay expedited fees, because Drew can actually finish bore the sleeves. We pound them in, slap a new piston, and then you're ready to go. So number one, Deck plate benefit, serviceability, hands down, very easy to work on. Number two, it uses a one inch longer rod. Now, there is a lot to be said about rotating mass, right? A one inch longer rod is inherently heavier than the standard rod, right? No doubt. But when properly balanced, some of this reciprocating mass actually adds a little bit of strength as well because the <clears throat> when you guys look at um sled pull and stuff like that they'll actually thicken up the cranks and make them way more so getting a little bit more reciprocating mass isn't always a bad thing um one of the things when you do a, like a lightweight crank for instance a lot of the manual transmission guys they struggle you lost some of that inherent inertia when you started taking weight off the rotating mass so to me <clears throat> kind of a wash now when you have a one inch longer rod, the real benefit, in my opinion, is you have a better rod angle. So both of these rods <clears throat> do six, seven displacement with a six, seven piston with a six, seven crank. When we do the deck plate, that's where that one inch longer comes in. Well, because this rod is now longer, the rod angle becomes more beneficial. And this is where we get into where the six, four came from. But before we get into there, the one inch longer rod at its absolute best is a one and a half degree angle better than a standard length rod. Now, one and a half degrees isn't a lot, 
But when you're talking about acting force of the um, engine, or I guess compression, on the piston, it is quite a lot. Meyer has a formula. I'm going to try to get into it. But I think it calculated out to like 40 pounds less of acting force with that one and a half degree rod angle change. So in my opinion, deck plate, number one, serviceability. Number two, it was still a wet block, which was a huge want in my, or actually a need in my book. Number three, you get the better rod angle. Um, now the downsides to a deck plate, number one, and we're kind of running into this. Everybody's like, oh, what's up with the 05? What's up with the 05? Well, when you run a deck plate, some things change, like the relationship of this CP3 to the injection system. Now, all the harnesses, everything else, that's the only snafu I ran into. We got solutions in order for this. We're going to have to make some lines. The other thing is the alternator. Now, luckily for me, I flipped this alternator bracket 180 degrees over and it points down and it lined up perfect. Uh, we are gonna have to get a custom belt length made because we lost the AC. And with the one inch deck plate, obviously it's going to change the uh, belt routing a little bit. So again, not a big deal, but it is something to think about. There are some issues that you're gonna run into. The other one being the firewall. Now, after seeing this in the truck, you do not have to do this. I did this purely to make sure we can work on it well. The other thing is all of our banjans and stuff that come to the intercooler, we're probably gonna have to make some new intercooler piping, but that is another thing because the head is now one inch taller. The other downside to me for a deck plate, and it's really just any engine, is eventually the bed plate. And the bed plate is going to be this portion right here, the bed plate and the cam tunnel is still weak on an OEM block. So that is kind of a downside, but really any Cummins block is going to have that downside to it. So to me, it really wasn't even in the cards. Now let's go ahead, talk about six fours. Now there's a few ways to do six fours. You have the um, six, seven with a standard length rod, standard crank, and then you go and do it's sleeved down to 4.125. I believe it's a power stroke piston. That one is very popular because you get a really strong cylinder wall with that extra, extra sleeve. Then you have the 6.4, which is a 5.9 crank in a 6.7 block. That one requires an 80 thousandths longer rod because now you're going in the opposite direction that we did with like the 6.1 stroker, right? So I believe Wagler and Carrillo maybe drew i'm not sure at dnj but actually yes because i believe they make a six four um you need an eighty thousandths longer rod now the benefit of that six four is you get the better rod angle now running the math on that you picked up i believe it's half a degree of rod angle so not nearly as beneficial as the deck plate so in my opinion I think at the time when that was invented before deck plate technology, before the comp wet block and all these other things, it was the best they had. So it worked. The other option that you can do to a six, four is you destroke it. And then what guys were doing is machining the deck off 80 thousands. Now to me, that is the dumbest way to do a six, four, because when you take 40,000 or 80 thousands off the top of this block, you're losing 80 thousandths off the fire deck. That's already pretty thin from the OEM. It's only about a half inch. You lost 80 thousandths. So that to me, I always thought that was kind of the poor man's six four because it required all OEM pistons, OEM rods, and it just required the deck to be machined down. Again, if you have it this way, don't take it personal. I just feel like it's the cheapest way to do it but it also provides the least amount of benefit. Again, all you're getting is the rod angle out of it. My favorite way to do a 6.4 is when you sleeve it down to four and an eighth or 4.125 inches. That's my favorite way to do a 6.4 because you're getting that really strong cylinder wall. I don't think the rod angle being a half degree benefit is really what's helping you on the de-stroked um, 6.4 style. Again, guys, a lot of talking. 
I've seen this covered and covered and covered. I really just wanted to show you guys, number one, why we went with a deck plate. Number two, what is a deck plate? And number three, the 6'1 stroker. Then you have the 6'4 um, <clears throat> in the three different variations. There might be more. Those are just the three I know. Then you have the deck plate. Um, the other thing I guess you have is a solid block. Uh, Todd's UCC truck runs a solid Hamilton block. I don't remember the bore size off the top of my head, but I think it calculates out to a 6.9 liter or maybe even a 7 liter. I know we have a factory crank in there. So we're getting all the cubes basically off of bore and not stroke. So with a solid block, you're able to do that. The last thing, a lot of you guys remember we called this the 6.8 or the 6 point great originally. When you run a 6.7 engine, factory bore, factory stroke, right? Just 6.7 and you bore it 20,000 silver and then you add about, I think that engine had 9 thousandths piss in the wall. It calculates out to 6.756 liters, right? So we rounded up to 6.8. It was something at the time, everybody had told me that a 6.8 or a 20 over couldn't hold a lot of power. And at the end of the day, it was the rods that failed. However, I feel like if we would have had compounds or triples, anything but the single turbos that we always ran, I think that block would have been short-lived too. But luckily for me, the rods are what gave. And what's really cool about all that is the block that we smoked because the crank got shoved over when the rods bent, that block is that block. Drew took my core, the OG six point great block and made my enforcer with it. So one of those sentimental things, we got the same engine that we did all that cool stuff in 2019 with this truck so it was kind of cool that he did that um again guys hopefully this answers some of your questions hopefully you guys aren't bored out of your mind i meant this to be more educational than anything i just see everybody asking all these different questions and yada yada i just wanted to kind of put some of them to rest for you guys give this one a thumbs up if you liked it leave a comment if you guys have any further questions i'm more than happy to respond i know i've been slacking on comments lately but between real life, my kids, uh, my wife, um, race truck, my real job, and trying to make sure I get three quality videos out to you guys every week. It is a handful, so bear with me. And hopefully you guys subscribe to see it. We're gonna drop a video on getting this engine installed in this truck. And I'm gonna keep get uh, I'm gonna keep up the content for you guys. I will catch you on the next one.